hi everyone so uh, this is rajdeep chanda i am from the microsoft graph connectors team so today we are going to talk about uh, microsoft graph connectors sdk so we'll mainly cover uh, three topics mainly what is the graph connectors sdk what are its capabilities why are we building it who are the users who will be using this sdk and how they'll interact with this sdk and how the experience would look like for these users um so primarily there are three main parts uh, when you write a, a graph connector today to connect your data source and write it into graph one is the connector code uh, second is the connector platform which takes care of the entire orchestration bit like uh, this crawl scheduling delete detection incremental crawls all these things and uh, lastly there is the admin ui there is some kind of ui which the admin uses for monitoring and managing all these processes right um so today if you write a connector code uh, you have to take care of all these things on your own uh, but with this graph connectors sdk what we are trying to do is trying to ease the process and take over the entire uh, connector platform and admin ui uh, on the microsoft build platform essentially so all you need to worry about today when you uh, use this graph connectors sdk is just to write the connector code which deals with just reading the data reading the accounts and connecting to the data source that is what you have to worry about and um, essentially the sdk will take care of the entire platform capabilities the crawling incremental crawls full crawls scheduling these crawls how to write to the graph uh, the acling part uh, that is the security trimming part everything and also additionally on top of that you will be able to use the existing admin ui that that we have the admin user interface that we have today that you use for managing the out of the box connectors that we provide today so some of the out of the box that we connectors that we provide today are like service now media wiki confluence these are some of the connectors that we already provide but in case you write a graph connector on your own using this sdk your custom connector can also be configured and managed and monitored from this uh, existing microsoft admin ui right so moving on uh, who are the main users who will be essentially interacting with this sdk so there are two main personas that we are looking at here one is the uh, connector developer in your organization who will be writing the code for developing this graph connector so this sdk will enable them to write a reliable and scalable graph connector and then there is a, a admin who will essentially be responsible for deploying and configuring this connectors and managing these connections once this connector is deployed uh, so we'll Uh, go a bit deeper into how this connector essentially works how the all the how all the parts come in together so if you look at point number 1 uh, the point number 1 is microsoft will develop and release a connector platform and a connector build package so connector platform is probably if you are using graph connectors today if you are using on prem graph connectors um, you have something called a graph connector agent so this graph connector agent will be beefed up as a connector platform that will be able to Uh, support your custom connectors as well so this is a tried and tested platform uh, which is capable of doing all the crawls scheduling these crawls deleting nerd doing delete detection and all these platform level activities and the graph connector agent will essentially the platform will take care of all these and the build package will essentially enable you uh, or the connector developer to write the connector code easily so the connector developer essentially would uh, leverage this package to build the code for their custom connectors and um, they uh, once they are done with the testing and uh, they are ready with the connector binaries they will pass on these binaries to the admin and the admin will install this connector platform on their vm and run the connector service to um, essentially build their custom connector and once this connector is built and deployed the connector developer will pass on a manifest file of a kind which will config which will contain some configurations so that you can create a connection and this connection on top of this connector can be created from the admin portal like uh, today you are creating out of the box connections for out of the box connectors uh, similarly for your custom connectors as well you can build these connections from the admin ui so if you look at uh, the developer experience the developer should be uh, conversant with the following terms so these are uh, some of the terms that you will come across in the developer documentation as well as the connector package that will ship so uh, these are very basic terms that will probably be used by the developer at uh, 
some point of time. So one is the data source. By data source, we mean uh, what is the third party data source that we are talking about for which you want to index the data into Microsoft Graph. Things can be uh, like I previously shared examples. It can be ServiceNow, MediaWiki, Salesforce. Similarly, what is the connector that you are talking about? The connector is essentially the main part of the code that you'll write to read this data, the access control info, and pass on uh, to Microsoft Graph. And connection is any specific instance of this particular data source that we are talking about for which you have written a connector. So one connector can have multiple connections, and these multiple connections can point to your multiple instances of the data source that you are trying to connect to the graph. And for uh, connecting to the graph, the graph connector essentially needs to crawl this data or traverse through the data source to read the data in it. And we support two types of crawls. One is the full crawl, uh, which will happen for the first time to read all the data in the data source. And we do incremental crawls on top of that to ensure that this data is fresh. So to do this incremental crawl, again, we support something called a checkpoint. Checkpoint is essentially we uh, say that this is the last point or the end point of the last crawl. And in the next crawl, we'll take care of um, the rest of the data source that was crawled from that particular checkpoint. So uh, these are some of the very basic terms that will be uh, mentioned in this connector package and while you're in the connector uh, documentation as well. Uh, but the primary uh, contracts that need to be implemented are the following. So uh, as you can see, there are three main services over here that needs to be implemented. And each of these service has its own methods. And essentially, there are four main methods that we are talking about here that are absolutely important for building this connector. They are very easy to implement and within a uh, if the if the connector developer is really conversant with the code, we expect uh, de developers to be up and running and ready with connector code in uh, in maybe a couple of days. So that is the level of uh, speed that we are looking at for developing your custom connectors. Um, these uh, RPC calls, the RPC methods that you are seeing over here, are very basic. Like the name itself uh, is representative of what uh, this does and uh, you can uh, essentially implement all these services and methods and get started for building your connector. Um, now coming to the admin experience, uh, this is the existing admin UI that you can see for building your out of the box connectors. These are some of the examples of the out of the box connectors that we provide. And to build a custom connector, essentially you will start seeing a new option over here in the same admin UI that you have today. And using this uh, custom connector option, you can go ahead and upload the manifest particular manifest file for the connector that you are uh, for the connection that you are trying to build on top of the connector and um, the same flow applies as you as, as it is there in the existing out of the box connectors then you just click next fill the relevant data and you are ready with your uh, custom connector in the admin portal that you can start monitoring and tracking um, so this is the very basic of uh, one uh, of how to build a connector and your custom connector and publish it. So uh, we are also uh, starting the preview um, in a uh, in a month uh, for this uh, uh, graph connector SDK. And if you want, uh, we would like you to sign up. Uh, there are a couple of questions. It will uh, take very less time for you to fill it up, and this would really help us, you know, uh, reach out to you and. Uh, get you onboarded uh, and help you build these custom connectors easily. So I'll pause over here, and if you have some questions, please shoot them at me, and I can uh, discuss them in the next few minutes that we have. Um, we did have a couple of questions. I did answer a few of them in the chat, but just to keep them on mm -hmm. the audience as well. Um, first is, where does the data store it at? Um, is it in the dataverse? Uh, where does it store all the data? So uh, essentially, your uh, data is. Uh, when we are saying that you, we store the data, we do not actually store the exact item. It is mainly your item schema that is stored in the Microsoft Graph. So I'm not sure of this data verse term, so I really need to look into it and I can probably get back on that. Dataverse is what um, Power Platform uses, um, either Power Apps or Power Automate. So in this case, it, it would not be in Dataverse. It's actually in where the Microsoft 365 tenant data is being stored at, if I'm not correct, if I'm not mistaken, right, Chief? Correct, correct, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so that is right, Brian. So this is stored in the Microsoft Graph and along with your tenant data. So it's in within the tenant boundary, essentially. 
And then there's a question about licensing for this. Um, I did include the link to the um, the licensing requirements for this, um, but I'm not sure actually either Reggie if you want to cover anything about licensing for uh, using graph connectors. Yeah, so I think this documentation should give a, a good view of the licensing. So E5 uh, tenants actually have uh, some quota that is uh, added on top of it, uh, some free quota, but also um, E3 uh, users can also sign up uh, for some quota to try and test this. On top of that, the main pricing that we're following is um, for a million items, it's uh, $1,000 per month. Uh, that is the pricing that we have today. But I think uh, this documentation should give a, a detailed view of the entire licensing model that we have. Excellent. Uh, and then one other question was, uh, is this being quote unquote kind of like the new BCS? And for those who are not familiar, BCS was the business connectivity services from back in, gosh, I want to say the SharePoint 2013 days. Um, so any comments on this being similar to that? So I can take yeah, that. Right? So, yep. yeah, so, so yeah, this is similar to BCS, but it's, it's better than BCS, I would say. Right? So <laughs> this is like, uh, helping you build a graph connector, which essentially brings in the content and uh, kind of puts it in the graph, which powers multiple experiences. Today, it's it's Microsoft Search, but we are already working on building more experiences which will be using this this data. So it's like the sort of the next version of PCS, I would say. Excellent. And I do see some more questions in the chat, um, but in the interest of time, I know we'll want to move on to our next topic. Um, so Rajdeep or Harshid, if you'd like to address the questions, yeah, we'll answer them. Um, yeah sure. That, that'd be helpful. So again, thank you so much, Rajdeep, um, for being able to give us a little overview of the Graph Connector SDK. Great to see this coming along and looking forward to people signing up for this to uh, start testing this out. I uh, really appreciate that. Mm -hmm.